okay, I'll, I'll stay here. Uh, um, it's a little hard to follow everybody. Uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, almost in response to everybody else, it's, you know, the one thing that I've noticed, now what we do, uh, we run a sort of family of publications out in New York called The Deal. We cover transactions. Um, uh, we, and transaction markets. We cover private equity, strategic M&A, venture capital, IPOs. We do a lot of work on bankruptcy, which is a good thing right now. Um, uh, one of the things that I've noticed over the years is that, uh, and it's a, in, a, in a way, it's, a, it's, it's sort of, it's a dovetailing with what you said, but there, there is this gap, this larger gap, I think, between um, uh, the financial system, a very complex and, 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 and dense interconnection, interconnected uh, financial system, and, uh, and the rest of the world. And it's grown worse. Uh, it's got, it's great, that, that gap has grown larger in the, in the last 10 to 15 years, particularly. Um, and the media that covers it, uh, there's, a, there's a larger gap than there used to be. That the, I think there's a larger gap between um, and breaking views uh, uh, is in some newspapers, but there's a larger gap on the ordinary reader and what you guys present. There's a larger, there's certainly a larger gap between what we care about uh, and what we try to produce for our readers, who tend to be in the financial sector, uh, almost exclusively in the financial sector, and an ordinary reader who may be buying a mortgage. We don't do personal finance. Um, we don't do uh, that level of of uh, we don't get into that level of the market. And, and so the problem with a, you know, a systemic problem like this, which, which had many different pieces, and all of which were sort of interconnected in some ways. Uh, again, Iceland didn't have a, a, a mortgage problem. Iceland had a, a, you know, an equity bubble. Uh, was that in order to understand the full extent of it, and I have to admit, I did not see the full extent of this coming. I saw bits and pieces of it. Uh, in, in 2006, um, didn't see the subprime at all because we were not concerned with subprime. Uh, we did see um, that bankruptcy rates were at, at the lowest historical rate in many, many years and that they'd been down there for far too long and that, and, and that if history was any guide that they would bounce back and they would bounce back in a very serious way. 2000, early 2007, we wrote a piece which we refer to in, in the office as the end is near cover which we basically predicted that bankruptcy rates were going to dramatically rise. Uh, no connection to subprime, uh, just, just a, a general sort of statistical look at the market. Um, we were concerned about uh, the vast amount of liquidity that was flooding the markets and, and the ability of liquidity to suddenly, dis liquidity to suddenly disappear. And we wrote that in, in, in uh, April and May of 2007 before the subprime thing really hit uh, on Wall Street, um, but you know, if you didn't, do, if you did subprime, but not you know credit default swaps, if you did credit default swaps, but not subprime, you only got a part of the part of the uh, the full picture here. You you really needed to get the full Monty uh, of sorts, uh, and 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 there were very few people out there that could do that, uh, if if any. Um, uh, and you could say, well, perhaps it was the responsibility of the, wall, of the big newspapers. Uh, as, as, as Dean said, the big newspapers had their own problems, um, financial problems. Perhaps they, they, they were, uh, you know, ov overly friendly to the markets. But I think it's more, you know, the one thing I always come back to is that it's a beat problem. You know, big organizations, big news organizations tend to be organized by beats. So the person covering credit default swaps is not going to talk to the guy who's covering mortgages. They're just not going to be in the same building. Um, you know, maybe there's an editor that can do that. But when, when you have a, such a complex system with such, so many complex pieces here, uh, that, that intercommunication just doesn't happen. Um, for us, again, you know, we were um, more than concerned by uh, uh, private equity and what we, an area we knew very well, we know very well, and, and, the, and the sort of overheating of the, of the private equity market. It was very clear that things like covenant light financing was a danger sign for the, for the, for the private equity business and, and would lead to no good end because, you know, you just can't get away with this sort of thing. Uh, we were concerned about accountability in the banking system 
and we were sort of, and we had written quite a bit about uh, regulatory issues, particularly at the SEC, which seemed completely uh, hopeless in those years, uh, through the whole turn of the century period. Um, but I can't say we predicted it, and I can't say that there was a moment in, two, you know, in early 2007 when I saw what those charts indicated. It was just too big and too complicated. Um, and there's another, there's, a, there's, a, there's another piece of this too, which is sort of philosophically, you know, um, particularly for, for, for reporters like we have that, that cover, um, that write for financial people, uh, it's a little dangerous. It's a little questionable to, to predict. And I, and, and I have thought a lot about this whole notion of prediction. There's this notion that, um, which is part of this whole, uh, this whole critique of financial journalism that we all should have been able to predict. Um, you wouldn't want me to predict the market. You wouldn't want me to predict your, to help you with your stock portfolio, I guarantee it. And, and I don't really feel capable, and I don't, my, I don't feel that our newsroom is capable of predicting you know, where these things are going. That doesn't mean we should not investigate. It doesn't mean we shouldn't learn some of these things that we didn't know well enough, you know, that we should, we should get down there and learn them in a more sophisticated way. But, but predicting the, the direction of a, of, a, of a crisis like this, I think, is, is easy to say in retrospect. It's really easy to say in retrospect. It seems so large, so enormous, uh, so obvious. It was not obvious to me uh, in 2005 and 2006. Um, I, I really, it, it, it's almost like, you know, there's a dozen paths into the forest, you know, and, that we can see, but there's only one way out, and we don't know where that is. We don't know which direction this thing could have been, could have taken, and, and, the, and the proof of this is, is to say to yourself, well, today, what's going to happen in two years? Where are we going from here? Does anybody in this room know where we're going from here? I don't, I don't think so, you know. The, the converse of that is the question I often will ask, is, which is, okay, so if it was so easy to predict, why didn't you predict it? Why didn't, you know, short of Noriel Rubini and a few folks like that, although those numbers are beginning to increase as everybody says they predicted it, but there's, there's, much, there, there's a far fewer than you would think actually predicted the timing and the, and, and the shape of the crisis that we had. It was hard, that's all. Um, so, I, you know, at the end of the day, you know, there's a, the, the Keynesian thing, which I really think is true and which has been forgotten, which is everything is uncertain. The future is uncertain. No one, uh, you know, can, can sort of construct this chain of causality from today, very complex today, and create and, create and, and know the future. Rab you know, Rabini, you know, Paul Krugman, Stiglitz, economists, you know, all, I mean, no one can do that effectively over a long period of time. And, and, um, and, and the danger going forward is that we, we, we make it sound simple, that we should have done it then, we should do it now, and it's simple. And to me, that's a sort of, you know, building blocks of a sort of bubble mentality. It's much simpler than we thought. Super. Okay, I'm going to have to leave it there for the minute, Bob. Thank you all so much, gentlemen. That was just.